I'm Kath, my channel is Made by Cathcraft. Thank you very much for joining me for this video. So today's video is all about what I've been sewing over the last week or two. So I've got quite a few things to share actually. My children have been back at school for a couple of weeks so I've had a bit more time to sew which has been really nice. Over the summer I've been writing a little list of things I wanted to make and I also had a little look through some of my fabric scraps and I've been thinking of uses for them too. So I've been getting busy over the last week or so, crossing a few things off that sewing list, which has been really nice. So I'm looking forward to sharing them all with you in this video. But I'll kick off as ever with what I'm wearing today before I start on with what I've been sewing. And the weather has finally gone quite autumnal here. We had a really hot start to September um, when the school went back, but this week, it's definitely gone more autumnal, um, the sky's all cloudy outside today, it was a bit sort of drizzly on the school run. And I've got on a bit more of an autumnal outfit, um, I've got on an old ready to wear t-shirt, this I think is a t-shirt from Gap that I bought before I started sewing, and it's one of those t-shirts that just seems to wash and wash without fading, so anyway it's quite a good one. But I've got it on with a handmade skirt, and this is quite an autumnal skirt, I love to get out at this time of year. It's a midi length skirt I made using this pattern here. I've got the pattern because it's hard to show the full skirt with it being midi length. So it is the Sabina skirt by The Little Pomegranate, which is a pattern I love. I've made two versions and I wear them a lot. And it's a free pattern, which is also great. Um, and you might have seen me talk about it before, so I won't go into too much detail. But basically it's elasticated waist, midi length skirt with a little ruffle at the bottom. It's got little pockets added in too, and um, it's got a good size range. I think it goes from a UK 6 up to a UK 34. And the version I'm wearing today is my more wintry one. I'll stand a bit so you can see the print. So it's quite a nice um, ditzy floral print. I do love a ditzy floral with a black base and then white sort of flowers on it. Um, and it just seems to go with quite a lot of things. And I'll pop up a picture of me wearing the Sabina skirt so you can see what it looks like on. It's just a really nice comfy one to wear and I find it to be quite versatile as well. Today I'm just wearing it obviously with a t-shirt and I wore it with a pair of trainers on the school run. But I quite like to dress it up with some black boots and like a cosy black jumper when it gets to cooler weather as well. So I know it's one I'm going to be reaching for quite a lot now the weather's getting cooler here. And I think I mentioned the word autumnal quite a few times in the introduction. I think I said that a few times <laughs> over but I am quite excited about it getting towards the sort of cooler seasons. I feel like I've been wearing my summer handmade wardrobe for quite a while now, so I'm really looking forward to getting out some cosier handmade items and mixing it up a little bit. I do love the change in the seasons and being able to pull out different things at different times of year. So yeah, that is what I'm wearing today. But I'll move on now to share the first thing that I've sewed over the last couple of weeks. This is the first item I sewed when my children went back to school. And it is a little dress for my niece. So I mentioned over the summer, I was looking through my fabric scraps and I came across a piece of cotton jersey fabric. And I thought it would be just the right size to cut out a little dress for my niece, who I haven't sewn anything for for quite a while. I made her a few jersey dresses when she was a little bit littler and I think she's probably grown out of them now. She is four now and she just started school last week actually, um, which seems like time's gone so fast. Um, anyway, I found this jersey scrap and it looked like it would be just the right size for my niece, a bit too small for my daughter. Um, if I wanted to make a dress for my daughter, I didn't think I'd have enough. But also the colours in the fabric, I thought were sort of right up my niece's street. So I kind of earmarked it for her. And I messaged my sister and asked her if my niece might like me to make her another dress because I wasn't sure, you know, if she started school now and she was a bit too cool for wearing dresses by her auntie or whatever. <laughs> so I thought I'd ask just in case. And my sister said she thought my niece would like one. So I went ahead and sewed it up. And it was really nice to sew up actually, um, having not made anything for her for quite a while. But this is the dress I made her. So a little, sort of quite a simple sort of jersey dress, a um, little sort of t-shirt top and a gathered skirt and little round neck. And the fabric is quite sweet. It's, yeah, it's a cotton jersey. It's got this sort of um, navy blue base and this sort of almost geometric floral print on. I guess it's got a few little stars in gold too and quite a pretty lilac colour there that sort of pops against the navy background. And I originally used this fabric to make myself a deer and doe scirocco play suit, so like a cropped version of the scirocco jumpsuit, which is not one I actually reach for much. I've got made two versions of the scirocco play suit. 
And I don't think I wore either this summer. I don't know whether I don't reach them, maybe because they're a place that they're a bit more tricky to get on and off. So I end up reaching for dresses a bit more. I'm not really sure. I didn't get them out at all this summer. But anyway, that's what I originally made. And the fabric came from an online shop. I think that's since closed down. I got it quite a while ago. But yeah, I had just enough left to squeeze this little dress out of it. And uh, the pattern I used for this dress is one I haven't used for a while, actually, but it's this pattern here, which is the pansy dress pattern by Poppy and Jazz, which is the sort of children's wear pattern company by Sew Over It, the sort of children's wear spin-off. They've got a few cute little patterns. Um, and this is the one I've used the most. I made this quite a few times for my daughter when she was younger, but she's now out of the size range. It's for a newborn to six years. So yeah, it was nice to revisit it and um, I pulled the pattern pieces out. I've got them all in this little pattern envelope. And I found I already had traced out the age four to five years version. I must have traced that for my daughter a few years back. So I was able to just use those pattern pieces and cut out this version for my niece. And it is a pattern I find that comes up a little bit roomy. Um, so it's definitely not a close fitting jersey dress by any means, but and my niece is quite petite. Um, but I'm thinking hopefully if it's a bit roomy, they'll be, they'll be, it'll last her a while. Um, so there'll be a bit of room to grow in it. Although it was quite hard actually deciding how long to make the bodice and the skirt because I'm not exactly sure how tall she is. I kind of had to sort of imagine her standing there and figure it out because I kind of wanted to finish it off when I gave it to her rather than getting her to try it on and taking it away again. With my children, I generally get them to put their outfits on and then I'll sort of crop them as needed. But I wanted to make sure it was all done so there's a bit more of a present for my niece. Um, so yeah, fingers crossed it'll fit her nicely. And my mum knits her little cardigan, so I think it will look quite nice in the winter with a little cardigan and a nice pair of sort of cute tights. So hopefully she'll like it, but it sews up really quickly. It's a nice, simple little sew. And I thought I'd have definitely enough fabric for this, but actually I cut out um, a few of the pattern pieces, like the bodice pattern pieces, um, and trying to squeeze them quite neatly out of the fabric. And then I cut out the front skirt pattern piece. And then when I looked, I didn't have quite enough fabric to cut out a whole back skirt pattern piece which is a bit silly. Um, I just assumed I'd have enough fabric. So I was a bit of a surprise when I got to that point. But luckily, with a bit of sort of pat pattern tetra tetris, is that the word? Um, I managed to um, fit in sort of two half back pieces. So there's actually a seam line going down the back skirt piece here. Um, and luckily, because the fabric's quite busy, I don't think you can really see it very obviously from the back. If I hold it at the back here, I don't think you can see it. So I think that'll be fine. So I was glad there was enough fabric to be able to squeeze out those two pieces. Otherwise, I've had like a sort of crop t-shirt and a front skirt piece and nothing else. Um, so yeah, I just about managed to finish it, which is good. And um, yeah, I'm hoping my niece will like it. So I need to give that to her next time I see her. Um, but yeah, it was nice to revisit sewing for her. And um, yeah, I thought it was quite a cute little dress. It's a really nice little pattern, so it was nice to revisit it. But yeah, that is the first thing that I sewed when my children went back to school. So the next thing that I've been sewing over the last week or two, or sort of pile of things actually, which I've got here to share with you, is another scrap busting type of make. And these items that I've been making also, I made using jersey remnants that I found in my fabric remnant suitcase. I've had a real clear out of that suitcase actually. I went through and pulled out all the fabrics I thought would work for this particular sewing project, which I've been wanting to tackle for a while, which is to make myself some more handmade knickers. Um, I've got some older knickers that are shop bought, they're gradually wearing out and um, I'm really enjoying wearing handmade knickers. I always look forward to when they get to the top of the pile in my knickers drawer because I find them really comfy actually, more comfy than shop bought ones. And so yeah, I'm gradually, trying, gradually I guess working through the process of having wholly handmade knickers as my shop bought ones get older and more tatty. I'll get rid of them and make some handmade ones to replace them. So that is what I've been doing over the last week or two, making myself some new ones. And when I make handmade knickers, I like to use this pattern here, which is the Iris Knickers pattern by Tilly the Buttons and Evie Le Louvre. They did a sort of collaboration for this pattern. Evie Le Louvre, I think, is a lingerie pattern designer. So yeah, they come up with this knickers pattern together and I really love it. I find it really comfy. It comes in loads of different variations. So it's quite a nice pattern. You can sort of adjust to find your perfect sort of knickers fit. I've actually done a sort of sew along type video on how I like to sew knickers up. Um, so I'll link that up above in case you fancy having a watch. It's not too tricky and it's quite enjoyable, quite a nice, speedy, satisfying project, I find. And I also talk in that video about another pattern you can use, which is the Megan Nielsen Acacia Knickers pattern, which is a free pattern. So there are a couple of really good options out there for sewing knickers if you fancy giving them a go. But I really like this pattern. I like their method 
for inserting elastic and all that sort of thing. So I'll show you my little pile of handmade knickers. I've made quite a few pairs actually, which is quite nice because yeah, my knickers pile has been getting a bit low. Um, so I made a couple of pairs in this really pretty cotton jersey that I originally used for a Tilly and Buttons Freya top. Um, yeah, and I just used the basic fold over elastic. That's my preference. I'm not a fan of anything too lacy off really. I like my knickers quite plain. Um, so yeah, I did two pairs with that sort of pretty sort of floral fabric. They were quite cute. Um, one pair I did with this fabric here, which is a fabric I've used to make a few things for my daughter. I made her a dress in this fabric and also a little pair of pyjama shorts. And she's got some knickers in this fabric too. I use the mini acacia pattern by Megan Nielsen for her and she finds that really comfy. So again, just with white fold over elastic. Then I made a couple of pairs in this funky cotton jersey. I think this is a Pigeon Wishes fabric possibly. I got it from Hey So Sister a while ago. And again, I used this originally for a Tilly and the Buttons Freya top. But it's quite sweet with this sort of navy base and these rainbow stripes, which I tried to stripe match at the side. Um, yeah, which came out right actually. Um, and again, with navy fold over elastic. So two pairs in that fabric. And that pretty much used up all the fabric scraps for those fabrics. That was quite satisfying to finish them off. And then I also just made a couple of pairs in plain black jersey. Can't beat a pair of plain black knickers. So yeah, those are they nice and simple. Um, I, the folder of elastic I all had in my stash already, I had the navy and the white and I've just ordered some um, black elastic online. Um, I find it's quite good to get it from eBay. I've also got it from Guthrie Garni and Minerva. So you can get it from quite a few different places. Um, I just quite like how nice and simple the pants are and they're really comfy. Um, I think when I make them, I make the mid waistline and mid leg openings, pretty much this version here. I think I did adjust the waistline slightly. I can't remember if I bought it. I think I might have bought it very slightly up, possibly. Um, I just made the first pair as a little bit of a wearable toile and then tweaked the pattern to get my perfect fit. Um, but yeah, so that's why I've been making lots of handmade knickers and it's really nice to use those scraps up too. So the next thing I've been making is something I'm often found making at this time of year. Um, I knew I needed to get on with um, <laughs> sewing these and it's some pairs of mini Hudson pants by True Bias for my son and daughter. My son just, I need to make them regularly because he does just go through the knees after a while. And also I think he's had a bit of a growth spurt. So a couple of his pairs were looking a little bit tight. So I'm making him a couple of larger pairs. I traced out the age 10, he's now 10 now. So I traced that size out. And I also tweaked the pattern slightly because he'd found it was getting a little bit tight around the sort of crotch area. So I just put that sort of length in that area a little bit down just to make it a bit more comfortable. Um, so it didn't feel like it was sort of yeah, too tight around there. So this is a pair I've made for my son. Um, his strong preference at the moment is to have black joggers with a bright green cord. So yeah, these were made to order for him. Um, and yeah, they just start really nicely, really comfy. It's pretty much all he wears um, outside of school. So it's lovely to see him enjoying what I make him. The pattern does only go up to age 10, I think. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do when he gets a bit bigger, whether he'll be able to move up into the men's hats and pants pattern or whether there might be a little bit of a gap in between. I might have to sort of try and size up this pattern a little bit myself, which I suppose I could probably do. Um, we'll see. But yeah, he fits the age 10 at the moment quite nicely. So I made that pair for him. And then my daughter needed a new pair for school for her PE kit. We tried on her old pair from last year and they were suddenly looking really a bit short. I think she's had a growth spot over the summer too. So here is the pair I made her. She doesn't like having the cord added. So her pairs, I prefer making actually because the cord's a bit fiddly to add, particularly the threading through bits. But just a little pair in the school pea kit colour for her, which is like a royal blue colour. Um, and yeah, they're a nice fit actually on her too. I think I end up sizing up for her to, I can't remember which size now, maybe the, maybe the age seven, she's seven now, I'm not sure. But I do find them fairly true to size. I had some pants and I often just make them a little bit longer then I can always crop them a bit shorter. Um, and make sure there's a bit of extra room there for a little bit of growth so they can last her across the winter when she's growing a bit more, I should imagine. Um, yes, yeah, so that's the pair I made for her. I have quite a lot of black French terry and royal blue French terry. Just I bought like a job lot of each of them, quite a long piece of fabric because I know that I'll always be making these. So I just got that in stock in case they ever need a new pair of um, them. I can just whip that fabric out and get them done quite quickly. So yeah, that's another fairly quick make that I've been making. So the next thing that I've been sewing over the last week or two is I think the thing I was most looking forward to sew that I had on my list to sew at the beginning of autumn. And this is something for myself, it's a sweatshirt for myself. 
using a new fabric, not something from my remnant suitcase, um, a really pretty fabric actually. So I'm really glad to have got it sewn up so I can start enjoying wearing it now the weather's getting a bit cooler. And yeah, it's a sweatshirt that I've made using this pattern here, which is an old favourite of mine, the Jara sweatshirt pattern by Megan Nielsen. It's such a lovely sweatshirt pattern. It's got so many cool options built in. It's one that I've used a lot, but I haven't made a Jarrah for a while, so it's nice to revisit it. But I'll show you the line drawings for all the different options built in. So you can make it as quite a basic drop shoulder, relaxed fit sort of sweatshirt um, with cuffs and a bottom band. Well, this has got this um, dipped hem with a kind of curve that goes lower at the back than the front. Um, and there's also an option with this for this sort of slit sleeve. I've never used that slit sleeve option. I've always gone for the cuffs, actually. There's this pretty um, version here, which I think um, is kind of the kind of signature yet Jarrah look, I guess, they got on the front of the pattern envelope. And it's what makes this pattern a little bit different to other patterns, which is this sort of tie knot at the front. And then finally, there's this option for a funnel neck and more of a straight hem without a um, bottom band. So yeah, loads of different options built into it. It's got a really good size range. I've got a very um, tatty old paper pattern. As you can see, it's been sellotape quite a lot. It's quite fat as well, because I've traced out um, lots of different versions of this. There's quite a lot of pattern tracing paper in there. Um, and the, that version goes from a US 0 to 20. But there's also, I think, a curve range that goes from a US 14 to 32. Um, and I've always made the size 0, um, which is designed for my bust, which is 32. My waist and hips would put me at a size 4. But I find the Jarrah's got quite a sort of straight um, fit slightly oversized fit so I've never bothered grading out at the waist and hips and it's still there's still plenty of room there um on the waist and hips so I'd say the bust measurement is good to go with on this pattern or at least that's what I found so anyway my latest version I made in some gorgeous fabric that I got from Guthrie Garni earlier this year and it is their Chicka Cheetah French Terry fabric so you might have seen this one I know they released it I think this on the month of their birthday celebrations um and they, they released also like a viscose fabric with Lauren's own print design on. And they also released this fabric, the Chica Cheetah print, which originally they had released maybe a year or so before on a viscose base. And I'd seen it then and loved it, but I wasn't sure what I'd make with it. But that when they released it again um, on a French terry base um, in some slightly different colourways, I thought I could definitely see that as a sweatshirt. Um, I really, so I yeah, went and got some of that before it all got snapped up because I think it went quite fast. So I think there are three colourways available. There was like maybe a pinky one and then maybe an aqua one and this one, which I thought was navy blue, but actually when I got it, it feels more like an indigo. It's got like almost like a very dark purple colour. And they've got the matching ribbing too. And actually when G&G &G released this as a sewing society kit, they released it to be made up into the Jarrah sweatshirt. But I didn't get mine as a kit because I already had the Jarrah pattern. So I just bought the fabric and the ribbing separately. Um, and I wasn't definitely sure I wanted to make it into a Jarrah sweatshirt, but I got it and I thought about it for a while and I thought, no, it just feels like it should be made up into a Jarrah, so that's what I did. So anyway, here is my Jarrah sweatshirt. I've used the ribbing for the neckband and the cuffs. And then for the bottom, I've gone for the tie bottom. I hold up it so you can see the tie there, um, which you just do up. Um, and yeah, it was really nice actually, because I hadn't made the tie version for quite a while. I've got two versions of the Thai sweatshirts already, but they're both really old now. They, I made them quite early on. I think they might have been the first two versions I've made when I originally bought this pattern. I've got one in a sort of interesting sort of floral fabric. There's a reverse French cherry, so there's sort of loop back um, textures on the outside of the fabric and the print is printed onto that side. And I've also got a version in a green colour in a CU6 French cherry, which I love to wear as well. So I knew I'd wear this one lots too. Um, so yeah. I really enjoyed sewing it. I love the colour. Um, I made the straight size zero, but I did make a couple of adjustments. I lengthened the sleeve slightly, maybe by about an inch or so. I also lengthened the body by about an inch too, because I find the Jarrah does come up quite cropped on me, because I've got a longer torso. I need to get a photo of this actually on me, so I'll try and get a photo and pop it up here so you can see what it looks like on. But yeah, I really enjoyed sewing it. Um, I added a little facing onto the back of the tie, just so that when you tie the tie, you can't see the white on one side. So you can see and it kind of, I just adjusted the bottom really and added a facing and it kind of goes all around the, the bottom the way I added it. I know that Lauren um, he always does a hints and tips video when she releases her G&G &G Sewing Society kit. And I think in her hints and tips video, she showed a way for attaching a little facing on the back of the tie again. So you wouldn't get that white um, back of the French cherry showing when you tied it. 
and I think I've done it a different way this is just the way I figured out myself um but if you were interested in finding a way to do this then you can I think still buy Lauren's hints and tips video and she might show you a way that makes more sense than how I've done it I've just done it how it made sense to me um but I'm not sure if it's the best way to do it but it's worked out okay it's all nice and neat um yeah it was just a nice fun sew and I love this fabric um so it's definitely one I'll enjoy wearing with a pair of jeans this autumn um so yeah that is my chicka cheetah french cherry fabric finally sewed up into jarra after a few months of deliberation <laughs> so as well as doing all of that sewing over the last week or two i've also been doing some knitting mostly in the evenings when i've had an hour or so to sit down in front of the tv with my husband so i thought i'd share with you how i'm getting with my latest knitting project i haven't actually finished it but i'm sort of working my way through it so i thought i'd share yeah how i've been going with that and what i've been knitting is a kitten from this book here which is a knitted cats and kittens book by Sue Stratford. I made quite a few knitted cats and kittens quite a while back for my children and then they've rediscovered the book and asked for a couple more. So that is what I've been doing. So I've been working on um, this cat for my daughter, um, which is Tabby Grey. So this sort of knitted tabby cat here. Um, and it's been quite an involved little knit actually. It's quite a small cat or kitten. Um, but it's involved some techniques I've had to really um, sort of almost relearn having not done them for a while, like sort of intarsia and carrying the wool across the back of the work. Um, so yeah, it's, it's been a bit of a head scratch, or at least I've had to concentrate really hard to make sure the wool's all in the right place for every line and I'm moving it to the right place and sort of binding it together to make sure there aren't any holes. Um, when I finish, um, using two different shades of grey, my daughter wanted the tabby kitten to be in the two shades of grey as per the pattern rather than in the pink she usually requests um and the wool's quite an interesting one because i'm using an aran yarn but on size four millimeter needle so it's quite a chunky yarn for that size needle i found so it ends up with quite a dense stitch so here is the main body of tabby grey taking place um so it's been quite fun to work on these sort of tabby stripes it's got you can see there's stripes on the little legs on the tail on the main body and you can see on the back of the work it's ended up really dense with all the pieces of wool being carried across and I have quite enjoyed the challenge of this actually because I haven't done a lot of work like that where you do carry colours across and sort of bind them in so it has been a bit of a learning experience and it's turned out okay I think um so I've got the main body finished I've got a few other little bits of the cat to knit and then I need to sew it together but I'm going to get on with knitting the one for my son my son's requested one too so I'm going to start knitting that one um after I finished all the knitted bits of this one and then sew them up both after I finished all the knitted parts so they kind of get ready at the same time but yeah, it's been fun to work on this. I've got a few now, as you can see, ends binds bound in, but because I've been carrying the wool across, there aren't as many ends as I might have ended up with if I'd sort of started afresh with different wool pieces, I guess. So shouldn't be too involved to sort of weave those in. Um, and yeah, it has been a nice challenge actually. And you can see the stripes quite clearly. So I'm quite pleased with how they've come out because I wasn't sure when you saw the two balls of yarn, the two different shades of grey, how clearly defined they'd be. But I think this is quite nice, actually, the two grey colours there. And hopefully... It will turn into quite a cute tabby cat once it's all sewed up. My daughter had a look and was a bit like, oh, <laughs> that doesn't look so good at the moment. But it takes a bit of imagination at this stage, I think. But hopefully once it's all sewn up and stuffed with some toy stuffing, it will look like a little kitten. So fingers crossed, I will share more updates on these knitted kittens and cats um, just towards the end of my videos as I go along through the autumn and carry on working on them. So that is everything that I've got to share in this video. So I hope you've enjoyed hearing about what I've been up to on the sewing front and on the knitting front there too. It's been nice to have a bit more time to sew actually and I've got some more things on my list to sew. I've actually ordered a couple of new fabrics. So I'm looking forward to doing a bit of an autumn sewing plans um, type video soon. So keep an eye out for that one. But if you've enjoyed this video, then please do give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, thank you very much for dropping by. Please do subscribe and press the bell icon too, which means you'll be notified when my future videos come out. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you've got some nice things on your sewing plans list too. And I hopefully see you again for another video soon. Bye.